Hey parents, if your baby is struggling with colic, first of all, I want you to know that you're not doing anything wrong, but there are things that you're going to learn in this video now that can help tremendously to reduce colic. I'm Bridget Tyler, a childbirth educator, doula, and a mama, and I want to help you thrive in parenthood, not just survive. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Now I know you're desperate for solutions, parents, for your colicky baby, so watch to the end of this video because not only are you going to get a game plan for now, but you're going to get a long-term action plan to help you and your baby navigate through this season. So let's dive into the most basic thing you can do, and it's burp your baby. And I know it sounds so simple, but if your baby is having constant tummy issues, it's crucial to be burping them before a feed, during the feed, and then after. You shouldn't be waiting till baby cries to feed them, otherwise they're going to be too stressed out to burp. You want to feed your baby at at least that two to three hour mark. So even if they're still asleep, if it's around that two to three hour mark, bring your baby up to your shoulder to burp them and then you can start feeding them as they start showing hunger cues like sucking on their hands or bobbing their head around or nuzzling their face into you. In the middle of the feed, burp them again and then obviously after the feed, burp them one more time. I have a video about burping that I've linked right up here. Colic is often thought to be rooted in abdominal discomfort. So naturally it would make sense that routinely burping baby can help a lot. Next step in your game plan is infant massage. This is one you absolutely do not want to skip. Research shows that infant massage significantly improves colic symptoms in terms of how many hours per day baby cries and the severity of the crying. So first you're gonna start with some non-toxic lotion that I have linked down below or just some coconut oil in your hands. Rub your hands together to warm it up and then gently put one hand over your baby's belly. If baby's belly feels firm, it might mean that they need to pass gas and this massage will help with that. The first rule when doing infant massage is to always wait 30 to 45 minutes after a feed and then rule number two is to always move downward. So with your hand on baby's belly, start with strokes with your palm going down their belly. You'll do this about 10 times. Next, take your hand and start on the left side of baby's belly and do a little half circle to the other side, moving from left to right, which is the direction that baby's bowels move in. Again, you'll do this about 10 times. And then to finish off, place your thumbs on the bottoms of baby's feet in the middle and gently but firmly massage in a circular motion for about a minute. While you're doing this, you can also fold baby's knees into their belly as this can help provide gentle pressure to work out gas or poop. And then lastly, gently tug on baby's legs to straighten them out, then elevate them both slightly and repeat that first massage we did with your palm on your baby's belly and gently massage down. And you'll do that about 10 times. Like I said, you don't wanna miss doing this one because it can help out tremendously. Next, wear your baby. There have been many studies that show a link between baby wearing and decreased crying in infants, but one randomized controlled study showed that baby wearing reduced the duration and altered the pattern of crying and fussiness, and it speculated that the relative lack of infant caring in our society today may actually predispose to crying and colic in normal infants, and that study is linked down below if you want to check it out. My favorite carrier for newborns is the wrap, and I've linked down below two options, the Solly that has a really nice and thin breathable fabric, and the Moby, which is a cheaper option, and the fabric is a little bit thicker, but they both work the same, and I've used and love both of them. Baby wear often, let baby nap in there, do chores with them in there. It seriously is a game changer. Baby wearing will often work on its own, but if not, you want to further mimic life in the womb. Being close to you is part of that, but go into a dark room with the sound machine. My favorite is the hatch, which is linked down below, and I think every parent should have it. Um, the next thing you wanna do is to give your baby a pacifier. If you feel breastfeeding has been well established, babies practice sucking in the womb, and the act of sucking actually helps babies relax. And I have a video all about pacifiers if you're not sure about them, and you can check that out up here. Having that steady noise, that dark, non-stimulating environment, movement like swaying with your baby, closeness with you, and sucking is how you can mimic that safe, familiar womb space that your baby was in for nine months that they loved being in. The next thing is to assess your baby's breast or bottle feeding habits. If breastfeeding is your baby's bottom lip tucked into their mouth, do you hear clicking sounds? Do they have milk drips? 
dribbling out of their mouth. These are all signs that tell us that the latch isn't sealed and baby might be sucking in air that is creating discomfort in their belly and maybe giving them inadequate milk intake as well. I have a video about proper latch that I've linked up here to watch if you think latch might be the culprit to baby's excessive crying and discomfort. Colic is a major cause of stopping breastfeeding early. So get counsel from a lactation specialist who can assess latch and offer personalized guidance. Colic also peaks at six weeks, which is also when mama's milk regulates. So a lot of times moms stress out that baby is crying because they're not getting enough milk, but that's rarely the case, especially if your breast milk has been sufficient for them for the last several weeks. Now, if you're bottle feeding, make sure you're elevating baby to feed them. Basically sit them up or lean them on your chest or your knees and only fill the tip of the nipple so that they are the ones controlling the speed and the flow of milk. A lot of times the tendency is to lay baby down and keep the bottle basically facing down the whole time so that they have a steady stream of milk. But this doesn't allow them to control the speed or the amount of milk that they even want. This upright feeding actually mimics breastfeeding the most because they have the most control over the flow. Also, the bottles I recommend are Dr. Brown's anti-colic glass bottles. Plastics, even if they're BPA-free, can leach harmful chemicals into the body that can disrupt baby's immature gut. Next thing is to introduce a probiotic. The probiotic lactobacillus ruteri, or lack of it in baby's gut, may be one of the contributing factors to colic. The one that I like is BioGaia and it's linked down below, but it's always a good idea to run it past your pediatrician first. Mama can also be taking a probiotic and I recommend Mary Ruth's and 22 Nutrition, which are linked down below. They're the ones that I take. And when you finish one, you get the other one and you just keep alternating between the two because there are different strains. And so it's going to help build your gut bacteria more holistically. Eating foods like sauerkraut, kimchi, yogurt, and kefir all have probiotics that help build mama's gut and therefore help baby's gut if mama is breastfeeding. So at this point in your game plan, it's important to rule out organic causes like a cow's milk protein allergy, reflux disease, lactose intolerance or overload, or some kind of infection or sickness that is causing this. Some of those things can be treated by mom's diet changes if she's breastfeeding or changing formula. If you're worried it might be diet related, check out my video linked up here about reflux and what can be done in mama's diet to help. And lastly, but so importantly, see a chiropractor. Any labor and birth puts a lot of stress on baby's body. So seeing a chiropractor early on in baby's life is so instrumental in their transition from womb to world. One study showed that excessive crying was reduced by half an hour in favor of the group receiving chiropractic care compared with the control group. But many parents notice an even more significant transformation in their baby who is suffering from colic when they take, take them to a pediatric chiropractor. A chiropractor is going to be able to address their nervous system and how it's affecting everything else from stomach issues to tummy time issues to breastfeeding issues and all the rest. So parents, you are not alone in this season. It will end and implementing some or all of these things can help tremendously. If you need support as you navigate through this really challenging season, I've linked a Facebook group called the Fussy Baby Site that will be able to support and give you information. And if you know a parent who needs to watch this video, make sure you send it their way. Thanks for being with me in this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye parents.